Speaking of uh, dividend paying stocks, I heard you uh, make the case recently that uh, for equities, there's opportunity in safe, uh, but dividend safe. paying. They have to be safe. You can't be out there buying banks. Uh, because if the wrong thing happens in Europe, they can go kaboom. You don't want to be out there buying technology companies mm -hmm. because they have a dividend, because technology companies make horrible long-term investments. Ever hear of Research in Motion? Mm -hmm. Ever hear of JDS Uniphase? Ever hear of Wang Laboratories? I mean, so just because something, it, it have to be an industry that's, that's truly kind of need-based or recession-proof. I, I talk about Kraft or Campbell's Soup. Mm -hmm. or, or things that, you know, pet food companies, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know, things that absolutely survive societal change and uh, even steep recessions. Does an imminent uh, rise in the dividend tax change that thesis at all? Uh, slightly. Assuming I mean, happens, I, 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 it affects everything, really. Mm -hmm. uh, dividends, d dividend tax is potentially going up is not a positive mm -hmm. for dividend paying stocks. Mm -hmm. Capital gains going up is certainly not a positive for stocks with large embedded capital gains. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, d d so, but it doesn't really change the thesis for the longer term. You're still dealing with an income-starved world mm -hmm. and one where, with your first question, people are trying to find some, some rate of return. I think dividend-paying stocks are okay if you're in the safe, recession-proof industries. Okay. Uh, can we go back to the U.S. for a little bit? Uh, uh, Romney has said that he would replace Ben Bernanke. Uh, sort of. I, I, I've heard different, different kind of thoughts on that. You know, Ben Bernanke is making pledges about interest rates into the middle of 2015. It's interesting that his term is up in January of 2014, mm. yet he's making these statements. He's in no position to make a statement like that unless he has certainty that he's going to be there. Um, so uh, w would Romney replace Bernanke, I mean get him out before January 2014? I find that hard to believe. Maybe he would, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, if if you if the reason for getting rid of Bernanke is you don't like these asset purchasing stimulus schemes, then you're really going to see a real hiccup in financial markets. I mean, the financial markets are highly dependent upon this, this these Fed schemes, and uh, obviously the volatility of the markets would go radically higher. And these Fed schemes seem to be going on. In perpetuity. Well, that's what he says. Again, he, sa he says in perpetuity. Uh, again, perpetuity means 15 months, mm. because that, that's that's it for Ben. Uh, he he might uh, choose to retire. That would be my suspicion. He might be reappointed if if Obama wins. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, they, for, for as far as the eye can see, is what they're kind of talking about. So I, I've been thinking that ever since the financial crisis came, that w the central planners, central bankers, politicians would ultimately throw absolutely everything they could dream up to try to keep the economy in some sort of contained uh, position. Mm -hmm. And that's happened. Uh, Draghi says whatever it takes. So rhetorically, he's all in. Ben Bernanke says in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. What that means is that we're getting further down the line. Once they're all in, well, then there's nothing left. So you get to the point where when something bad happens, there's really, it has to, it'll have to play itself out. This is why, again, going back to the first question, I, I think people should be playing it safe and not fretting over where they're missing 3 to 6 percent, even 10 percent return from something. I think the opportunity you're going to get is going to be substantially uh, greater than that. In fact, I, I think the opportunity could be better than March of 2009. Okay, okay. Uh, but it's probably going to be in those economies and those markets where demographics are, are greatly more favorable than they are in Europe. Demographics are horrible in Japan. They're actually not very good in China when you go looking forward 30 years. They're okay, they're okay in the near term. And they're okay in the United States, thanks to immigration. But Europe uh, just really seems like something that should be avoided for like a generation. Okay, okay. Uh, can you give us a, a, a recent uh, acquisition that uh, Double Line Capital has made and, and, and the thesis behind it, something that you've uh, bought recently? Well, the most thing that we did aggressively was buying commodities, particularly gold, uh, when it was below 1600. We actually uh, like markets when they've had a big move and then they get very calm, mm -hmm. and yet uh, they're likely to have high volatility. I like trading volatility basically right now. I'm not really willing to make great big bets on something going up or down. I, I like put call strategies. I like pair trades. For example, I, I like to. Uh, long the Spanish stock market in, in May and short the S&P. Okay. The idea being that directionally they're likely to move in tandem, but if you have a really bad outcome in Europe, uh, Spain would drop, but the S&P is going to fall a lot. For, it's, a, it's an all-time high, basically. Mm -hmm. And the idea was if you had a relief rally due to rhetoric and the 
stimulus types of responses from central planners, then markets would go up. Well, the S&P did go up. Spanish stock market went up much more because it's, you know, it's kind of depressed and mm -hmm. has bad things factored in. Now, even though I'm not very positive on China, I like the idea of being long the Shanghai index and short the S&P for exactly the same reason uh, reasoning is Spain versus the S&P back in uh, the springtime. The Shanghai is very low level, multi-year low, S&P 500, multi-year high. China is either going to slow down even more, which is ho just horrific for global growth. Mm -hmm. In my presentation today, I show just how important China is as a contributor to global GDP. It's incredibly important. If that disappears, the global economy is in really big trouble. My guess is that developed stock markets will not do well at all if the Shanghai is to, is to push below 2,000. So even though China might be the cause of uh, bad uh, economic growth, I, I think it's more priced in mm -hmm. in the Shanghai, whereas the uh, U.S. stock market is, is on a high. Can we trust the numbers coming out of China? Of course probably? not, but you yeah. can trust the price of the Shanghai. Yeah. The Shanghai is, is the one, and there's other indices too. I like the Shanghai because it's full of real estate and finance, all the things that are really suspect. And uh, uh, the price is the price for Shanghai. That you can't fool around with. The government can yeah. manipulate it, and, but if you're if you're if you're uh, nervous about investing in markets that are manipulated, you better not be in the U.S. market <laughs> because uh, it's about as manipulated as you can get right now. Yeah, yeah, good point. Okay, well, Jeffrey, thanks very much. I appreciate your time. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Thank you.